Hello, this training is for the Kid Reports Administrative Portal Training, also called Director Training. What you're looking at on the screen right now is the login page for Kid Reports um, as you find it through the browser. Just go to kidreports.com and you will find this page and then go to the lower left where it says Kid Reports Login and click Login and that will open the login page for you. So I'm gonna input my username and password. So you will receive your username and password after you have been onboarded through ProCare. Um, and that will set up the synchronization with your ProCare account as well. Uh, once you put in your username and password, you can sign in. And when you first sign in, you'll be taken to this home page. Several things on this home page. First, notice the red button that says send welcome email to 69 new family members. Um, as your account synchronizes from ProCare, any new family members that come over will appear here. And all you have to do is click this button and it sends the login information for each family member um, who has an email in your account. That information does synchronize from ProCare to Kid Reports. And uh, just to repeat, it is a one way synchronization. Uh, the other things you can do on this page you can go to the Help Center or you can go directly to Training Manuals. Let's click on Launch Help Center. And this opens up an additional page of FAQs for teacher, director, and parents. Uh, there is some Kid Reports and ProCare setup tips here, um, but you can go directly to training materials if you wish to see any available self-guided training, including a teacher training manual, which is a step-by-step -step manual for the teacher application. There's a quick start setup for the administrative portal, this is just an eight minute video that gives you just the very bare minimum of setup instructions. And then if you do wish to see um, additional training for teacher, you can go to training videos, director and teacher and go to the teacher training video. It is just 27 minutes long and is a live training event. Let's return to the home page. And now from this page, we're gonna go through these buttons on the left, beginning with settings, and we're going to start with facility. The facility page shows a lot of key settings on your, uh, on your account, including your physical location, that is your center name and address, um, your time zone and phone number, they also appear here. Notice that uh, you can select the state standard framework for your state. Just click on the drop down arrow, and select the state standard that aligns with the year. Notice you can also select Montessori. All you have to do is select your state and then we'll save it at the bottom. I'm not going to review every field in this video, but we will hit the most important fields. Notice that you can upload a logo for your center. We do recommend keeping it a fairly small size. Uh, that way it doesn't take up too much space on your reports because it will appear in the heading of any reports that you run, including the daily report that goes to family members. Immediately below that is the automated send of the daily report. A daily report is a report that shows a summary of all recorded activities for children in your center. Uh, so the parents do receive this at the end of the day as a roll-up report of everything that was captured for their child. I've set mine to set uh, to send at closing time, so 6.30 p.m., and that's when it will send automatically. Or I've also checked the box that says send the daily report when the child is signed out. We do recommend setting both of these. That way the daily report will go when the child is signed out or at the automated time, whichever comes first, but it will not send at both times. It will only send one of these ways. Who can delete events? There are three choices here. You can say all teachers can delete events regardless of individual setting. Um, that would mean an event is something that's recorded in the teacher application in the classroom. So if a teacher mistakenly duplicates an event, for example, a bottle feeding, then the teacher would have the ability to delete the duplication. Otherwise, you can enable that individually on the teacher profile on the teachers tab, or you as the administrator can be the only one that has the ability to delete an event. Can parents send messages directly to teachers? 
This is typically checked. It allows parents to message all of the teachers assigned to their child's classroom. So for example, if a family member has a child in the infant room one, if they send a message, it would go to all of the teachers currently assigned to infant room one. You can disable teacher to teacher messaging if you wish. You can remove the time and the teacher name from daily reports as well. Name to face frequency in minutes. Name to face is a tracking sheet required by some states. It ensures that teachers are visually making connections with those children at set time intervals throughout the day, ensuring that the child is safely in their care. You can set the interval for as little as every five minutes uh, to as long as every 60 minutes with the default setting being every 30 minutes. You can disable teacher accounts after business hours and over the weekend if you wish, and you can set the disable time here and the re-enable time here. Tracking sheet slash name to face indicates which tracking sheets are visible in the teacher application. If I say show only the name to face tracking, then that's the only one that will appear in the teacher application. However, if I do wish to define a secondary sheet, I could make that the only sheet that is visible, or I can show both the name to face and a tracking sheet that, a, that I design. Uh, so if I want to design a tracking sheet, I can place the header here. In this case, it is the SIDS Safe Sleep Tracker, and then I can use the child sleep position for my infant room here as the subheader. And then I can turn on both name to face and that tracking sheet. So when I save this at the bottom, these will both be visible in my teacher application. Continuing on, hide the send daily report button from teachers. Remember above that we set the daily report to send at an automated time um, or when the child is signed out. For that reason, we wanna hide the button from teachers so they don't accidentally send the daily report. Otherwise, it would prevent the report from going at the automated time or when the child is signed out. And finally, show arrival message option for parents. This is a button that appears when you check this box. This will um, cause a button to appear in the parent application. Um, all the parent has to do is select the child, tap that button, and it'll send an automated message to the, uh, the teachers in their child's room that says that they will be there shortly to pick up their child. Any changes you make, just click Save at the bottom. So that was Settings Facility. Let's look at Administrators. You can have as many administrators in your account as you wish. You can see there are two set up here. Let's open My Profile. You can see first and last name, the email address, which must be unique, and then the password, which will always appear as just about 20 or so dots. This is a security feature to hide the length of the actual password. Passwords need be eight characters and must include a number. Uh, so even though this shows a lot more dots, I can tell you the password is not that long. Uh, so that is a, a security feature. Now, you can never read a password in Kid Reports. However, as the administrator, you can reset the password in any profile. You can use the email address as a username or the username that appears here. You can set up approval items notifications. So here, I've set up my notifications to arrive only once per hour. I could say notify me every time I have something to approve, um, but I would begin with the once an hour first and see how many notifications you receive throughout the day. As an administrator, you can also enable or disable administrator accounts directly. And again, if you make changes, just click save at the bottom. Let's continue on to settings and we're going to skip down to age categories. These age categories have already been defined. However, when you first open the age categories page, you will see just five different age categories. Infant, pre-K, preschool, school age, and toddler. You can add a new age category, or you can click on an existing category and you can rename it. 
Note that it also calls for you to set a room ratio, which is exclusively the number of children to one teacher. The, co the colon with the one following is implied, so simply enter the number of children and then click Save. You will want to define the age categories by the actual age that appears for your different rooms in your center. Now we're going to move on to settings and rooms because they are closely related. So here you'll see all of the rooms in my account. Now all of the rooms synchronize from ProCare, but the age category does not. So you do need to set the age categories up exclusively in Kid Reports. Once they're set up, you can align them with the room. The first time you come to this page, um, you will see infant for all of the age categories on the rooms. Uh, so you will need to set this for each room. To set it for a room, just click on the room, and then you can select the age category. And maybe we're gonna say this is now preschool for the outdoor room, and we're gonna save that. And notice that for the outdoor room, preschool is now saved. So this is an important alignment because of the next thing that I'm going to show you. We're gonna jump down to activities. The activities page is set up exclusively by age category. So you can see that's what appears here at the top. Um, now the reason for this is that you may have multiple rooms, for example, for infant zero to 12 month. So if you have two or three rooms, it's a lot easier to manage the activities in one place rather than have three or four that you have to do the identical thing to. So that's why this page is organized this way. There are four things you can do here. The first is making an event visible or not visible by checking or unchecking the box. So if I wanted to make a bottle feeding um, visible to the teachers in the classroom for my two to three year olds, I would check the box and then click the apply changes to activities button at the upper right. If you wanna remove it from view, uncheck the box and again, click apply changes to activities. So that's the first thing you can do. The second thing you can do is add a new activity. So I want to add a new activity under daily routine. I click the plus add button. I name the new activity. We're going to call it Outdoor Explore. It's going to go under daily routine. But I do want you to note that you can add the daily, uh, the uh, new activity anywhere and then just select where you want it to go. When I click Save, that will add it to daily routine. And then what I would do next normally is go through, when you mouse over a cell, you'll see a pencil icon and a paper, double paper icon. The pencil icon allows you to edit the details. When you click on Edit, now you can completely define everything about this event or activity. I'm not going to do that for this right now. Instead, we're going to modify an existing activity and it's done exactly the same way. So under meal, let's go to preschool and we're gonna click on the pencil icon. And now you can see all of the things currently defined for meal items under this age category. So if I do wanna add additional food items or remove food items, I can do that here. Uh, for example, I wanna remove Big Mac from here. So I've removed Big Mac, but I could add something else. Um, we're just going to add hamburger. Whoops, I misspelled it. Click Save. And now that has been added as a food item. You can add or remove new headings. You can see there's a new heading here. I'm gonna delete that one because I don't wanna use it. And if you wanna add a new heading, you can. I'm gonna say new heading two. So now I can add the new heading two. It appears here. And then I can begin adding details. And as I add details, then I can decide which order I want it to appear in in the teacher application. If I want to move this all the way to the bottom, I can click the large arrow, and that moves it all the way to the bottom, 
or I can move it up or down one at a time with the small arrow. And again, you can delete anything you don't want to use. It's not saved yet. Once I've made all of my edits, there's a save button at the bottom right or at the top right. Click one of those and that will save your changes. So the final thing you can do here is modify the approvals. When I mouse over a lock, all these little padlocks, and you can see right now they are all locked. When I mouse over a padlock, that tells me the current security setting. If I want to change everything from meals to no review, I can select no review for this group. And when I click apply security changes, it unlocks the padlocks for everything here. So that's how you can do it by a group. If I want to change it for just a single activity, all I have to do is mouse over the activity, left mouse click, and I can make my selection here. So maybe I don't need a review on this, or maybe I want to review everything about it. So now when I mouse over just that activity, we'll see that it says administrator must approve event. So I need to approve the language and any images. If I go to, to the next one, it shows what the current setting is for the rest of these, which is approve photo and video. So that's how you do it individually. And if you wanna change it individually for just one uh, or for everything at once, you can go here to the bottom and you can select the setting that you want. And maybe I wanna just, just approve photo and video. So then when I apply security changes, that will restore everything. All my padlocks are locked once again. And when I mouse over, it says administrator must approve photo and video, photo and video. So that is how you use this page. Final thing I'll show you, we did modify the meal activity for preschool. If I wanna copy that, all you have to do is click on the double paper icon and I can copy it to all categories. Click OK and it'll copy that to all the age categories for meal. Now let's move on to teachers, family members, and children. So if we go to teachers, they will all synchronize from ProCare. They will synchronize as long as they have a higher date, a status of currently employed, and at least one room or workspace assignment. So let's take a look at Mary Anderson. To open a teacher profile, just click on the last name. Notice that I cannot edit Mary's name or whether or not her account is enabled. You will have to do that on the ProCare side and allow it to synchronize overnight. Notice there is no email address in Mary's profile. It is optional for teachers. And there are three good reasons for that. Uh, the first is if the email does not synchronize over completely, then it may prevent the teacher from logging in. Um, oftentimes, second reason, oftentimes uh, teachers are also family members. So their email address needs to be in use on their parent or family member account. Uh, so it's a good idea to remove it for that reason. And finally, uh, notifications will go to teachers in that classroom assignment. Uh, so for Mary, it would be the infant room one and two uh, that are currently assigned to her. If you have an email address in the teacher profile as well, that means they will get duplicate notifications in their personal email as well as through the Kid Reports application. So that is three good reasons to remove the email address from teacher profiles. Again, the password is just a bunch of dots to hide the length of the actual password. And again, it must be eight characters and must include one number. If there is no email address on the profile, then the only way the teacher can log in is using their username as the username upon login. Now the key settings are at the bottom. Notice the drop-down menu for rooms. So remember what I said on the facility page when a teacher is set up um, and, and family members can message teachers in their child's classroom, any 
teacher assigned, for example, to infant room one and two will receive a message for infant room one or two. So if you assign all teachers to all rooms, then every teacher in your center will get every message that comes in from a parent. So if we wanna limit the traffic a little bit for, for the teachers, um, it's a good idea to assign them to just their primary rooms and then uncheck the box that says limit teacher to assign rooms only. That will allow the teacher to float to other rooms as needed. So if they need to give someone a break for lunch, just as an example. Allow teacher to set profile pictures. Um, by checking this box, you turn on a camera feature in the mobile application so that uh, the teacher can capture profile pictures for children or their family members. Teachers can publish portfolio items. This is typically not selected. Uh, that is exclusively for the administrator to approve items uh, for portfolio. Portfolio items are considered for long-term child development observations and assessments. So even though the teacher may record those, it's up to the administrator to determine when and how that is released. Allow teacher to send messages to family members. So if you do turn on uh, messaging from family members to teachers, uh, by clicking this, you're allowing the teacher to reply to those messages. And then finally, allow teacher to delete events. Again, remember from the facility page, who can delete events? And if you say uh, it's only enabled on individual profile, then this is how you turn on that feature. And of course, if you do make changes to the teacher profile, profile, click save. So that was teachers. Let's go next to family members. And we're just going to open Greg Adams' profile. Normally the email would synchronize over. In this case, because the email address is already in use, it did not synchronize over. So a general rule in Kid Reports, if the email address is already in use on one profile, you cannot reuse it on another profile. You need a unique email address for any required profile like family members. Uh, so here's Greg, and notice I cannot edit his name, but I was able to input the email address directly in Kid Reports. We do recommend if you're going to update uh, this core data for any family member, do it on the ProCare side and let it synchronize over. Again, the password is just a bunch of dots and the username appears below and will be auto-generated. Immediately below that, and just to uh, confirm for you, parents can also see this page. So they can see the first part. They cannot update their email or their name. They can update their password, their username, and then they can select their preferences, such as send me updates by the following. So Greg selected alert by email and alert via iOS or Android application which means a push notification through the Kid Reports application. If Greg were also to select alert me via text, then we need to ensure that there's a phone number um, attached to his profile, which it is here. And again, notice you cannot edit the mobile phone data directly in Kid Reports. You must do that in ProCare. So the family member can select how they wish to receive updates. I'm going to change this a little bit. And they can also select how frequently they wish to be notified. If they select only send me a summary of events at the end of the day, that would be the daily report. If they select send me events as soon as they are recorded, along with the summary of events at the end of the day, then they would get both the daily report and they would get a notification for any of these activities that they keep checked. So if, for example, this family member did not want to see anything except meal activities for, for their child. They could turn off everything else. Well, maybe they want to see incident reports, um, but maybe they're most interested in how their child is eating. So they could select everything they don't wish to receive a notification for. They only want to receive notifications around meals and any incident that may occur. Further down the profile, notice that you can update the profile picture for a family member. The picture will synchronize from ProCare, but you can also set a picture directly in Kid Reports. Again, if that's turned on for the teacher, 
uh, then the teacher could take the picture in the mobile application and save it. You can also do that as well by removing the profile photo and uploading a new photo for that person. At the bottom right, note that you have a button to reset and email a new password for the family member if they're having difficulty getting logged in, or you can resend the welcome email to just this family member. And at the very bottom, there are quick links, quick access to the children in their account. If you do make changes, click Save. So that is family members. Also on the family members page, we're gonna to go to Maria. At the upper right, you'll see it says view notices. When you click on view notices, you'll see every notification that was ever sent to this family member. If you wanna see if that was actually opened, you can click on the time stamp for the email or a text message. And what you would typically see is processed, delivered, and the number of times opened. In this case, because it is a fake email address, it was deferred until it finally bounced. Um, but these are very good to look at if you know of a family member who's having difficulty receiving notifications from you. It's a good place to check just to see if they are going out and if they are being delivered successfully. So again, that was the family members page. We're gonna move next to children. Children will synchronize from ProCare as long as they have an enrollment date, a status of currently enrolled, and have a room assignment. Notice on several of these that there's a flag and a warning triangle. So let's take a look at Brenda Elmore by clicking on her name. So at the very top, you'll see it says print daily report or resend daily report. So if I wanna print a daily report for any day, I can select the date, I can click print daily report, it will open in a browser, and I'll see the daily report for that child for that day. If I wanna resend that daily report to the family members, all I have to do is click resend daily report. Notice that you cannot edit the child name, their birthday, whether or not their account is enabled, or the room to which they are assigned. You must make those edits in ProCare. Additional information and emergency contacts do not synchronize from ProCare. However, you can set them up directly in the administrative portal on this page, or your teacher can do it on the child profile in the mobile application. Below the child profile picture, again, you can update the profile picture and Kid Reports will save the most current photo, whether it is from ProCare or in Kid Reports. Below that, you'll see red uh, flag profile with special instructions. If I click the first box, that puts the red flag on. Add a second flag to profile, puts the warning triangle on the profile. And I flagged this profile because the child has a severe peanut allergy. Below the flags, you'll see quick links to family members and the last 50 recorded events in the classroom for this child. And below the last 50 recorded events is the enrollment history for Brenda. So now we're gonna move on to the events tab at left. So I showed you the last 50 events for Brenda. This page shows all events ever recorded since my account was created in Kid Reports. If I wanna see all of the events for Brenda, I can just search for her name. So type in the child's name, click search, and now I get all 336 recorded events for Brenda. There's a page selection at the right, I could select a page if I wanna see um, quickly navigate backward to earlier recorded events. So that is the events tab. And finally, at bottom left is message center. The message center is where you go exclusively to read messages that you've received, this is my inbox, or messages you've sent. Notice that it opens up as a window from the mobile application. So that's everything for the buttons at the left.
Now let's take a look at some of the blue buttons in the center. We're going to begin with send message. So the message center was simply for reading messages you've received or sent. Send message allows you to message not only family members in your account, and I'll show you how to do that first. So where it says send to, I can send to all family members in the entire facility. I can select it by age category, room, or individual child, or the family members of all absent children. You put in the subject, and perhaps it's photo day. You can put in your photo day message. And then you can attach up to three URLs and up to five documents. So perhaps you'd attach a permission slip for the photograph. Maybe you'd also include a mail-in order form for the photographer. Even though you've got the website here, maybe some people want to mail in their order form. And then finally, you could attach maybe the monthly newsletter that includes a description of photo day and what the kiddos are recommended to wear. Click send, and that goes to all of the selected family members. You can also alert teachers by clicking on the orange alert teachers button. You can alert all of the teachers in the facility, all the teachers assigned to a specific room, or an individual teacher. Make your selection, write your message, and click send. So let's go now to attendance. We're going to select attendance records. This page will show attendance only for those rooms that have children currently signed into attendance. It'll default to the current day, but you can navigate back to previous days if you wish. So if I want to look at yesterday, I can. And I can see just, again, those rooms that had children in attendance. So I'm going to return to the current day. And what you can change is the room location. So if I want to look at infant room two, for example, I can go there. Notice um, when children are moved, you'll see a transition in this column, transitions. So Aaron was moved, as was Cindy. And it looks like Richie was actually signed out. So you'll see it a sign in time, a sign out time, and the total number of hours. Notice in infant room one that Alexander was signed in, signed out, total hours, and was also transitioned. You can edit any of these times for a uh, child or teacher by clicking on the pencil icon and just enter the new time. And that'll save it. And as long as there's a red X, you can delete the time entry, but that would necessitate re-entering the time in the teacher application. You can also print a roster by clicking print roster and it'll open up in a browser and you can see the current attendance plus all of the absent children for that day. So that just opens in a new browser window. Also on your attendance page, if we go to attendance real-time dashboard, we can see the attendance on this page. So notice for my infant room one that it appears red. It's because my room ratio for this room is actually three to one. So I'm actually out of ratio. So in order to get this in the green, like my infant room two, I would need to move a child out or add a teacher to this room. If you are at room ratio, you'd get a third color. It would appear as orange. So if we click on the room name below, you will see the children who are currently assigned to that room, who are currently in attendance in that room. If you want to find the location of any child, all you have to do is go here to the top where the where is feature is and select the child name. And it'll show you when the child was signed in. It'll also show you the location if a child was moved. So if we want to see the location of Ashton Kaiser, I can go down here and select Ashton. I can see the child was signed into infant room one, actually was signed into infant room two and moved to infant room one. 
So that is the attendance real-time dashboard. We're going to move on to portfolio. The portfolio page will appear anytime the teacher saves an activity that's identified as a portfolio activity. Again, these are for longer term child development um, observations and assessments. So for example, you can see for Cindy, she has six released records, two private and five pending. So if I click on Cindy's folder, I will see the pending items here. These are the items that are still pending. These are the ones that are currently private. They were saved here, but they have not been shared with the parent. And then those that were already released have been sent through the parent application directly to the parent, so they no longer appear here. You can go back to the portfolio page and you can see all pending items at one time. So if we click view portfolio page, now we see all of the pending items for all of the children in the center. There are three actions you can take with any portfolio item. Um, first, you can save directly to the portfolio folder, and that just saves it to this child's folder. You can delete it if it was something that was accidentally assigned to a portfolio, or you can publish immediately to the parent. So to do any of those, you'll have to select the um, item first, and maybe I wanna do it for two kiddos here. So you can select any number, you can select all at once if you wish and do the same thing with everything. I'm gonna select the first two and I'm going to publish to parent. It'll ask me if I'm sure I wanna do that when I click okay. Those items are sent and notice that they no longer appear at the top. We have some additional items to approve. Uh, so that will publish directly to the parent application and the parent sees it immediately. If you want to hold on to these and save them with the parent during a parent-teacher conference, you can simply save to portfolio and share it with them at that time. So that is the portfolio page. Now let's jump over to approvals. The approvals page has two different queues. There's the event and media queue. So remember what we set up on the activities page. I selected everything to require approval for photo and video. I want you to note that signatures are saved as images. So you'll want to approve signatures immediately if they go to something else. There's another one. I could approve all of them at once, or you can do them one at a time. Again, if you want to approve everything at once, just check the box at the top, and that selects everything in your view. So I would go through, and maybe I'd select several of these for approval at one time. And again, if I click the green check mark at the top, that will approve those three items. And then there are other items to be approved. So that is the media queue. There's also an event queue. And in this case, this happens to be an incident report. And I've set my incident reports to require me to approve everything, including the language used by the teacher. To open up this incident report, all I have to do is click on it. And now I can edit anything about this incident report. So maybe if uh, the teacher missed that they had applied a bandage as well, we can apply bandage. I can go through and I can edit anything about this. The picture was attached here. The signatures were also already attached. I already signed it as an administrator and then the parent signed it. I can also change the time if we needed to correct the time for any reason. The teacher who recorded the event, I can add additional notes or review them here. So if I wanted to make any corrections to spelling, I could make it here or add my own comments. If you had not yet signed it, you could add your signature and you probably wouldn't need to, but you could add a reminder if needed. If you do make changes, just click Save. And then once you're comfortable with your review of that incident report, select it and approve it. So now my approval queue for event is clear. Next, let's go to Search Reports. So you can run a report on pretty much anything in your account. You can filter by the entire facility and age category or room or an individual child. 
If you select anything other than entire facility, you'll get a secondary menu where you can select the appropriate uh, age category room or child from the next menu. I'm going to keep it on entire facility. It defaults to search all events, which is anything recorded for that day. You can also look at just sent messages, a report that shows if daily reports were sent. You can look at current attendance or legacy attendance, name to face or tracking sheet, room transitions, teacher check-ins, and you can also look at the state standards assessments report or assessment events, which would be anything recorded as a portfolio item. If you select a specific activity type, you'll get a secondary menu, and then you can select anything that appears on your activities page. And again, you'll spend a lot of time customizing the data on the activities, so it's good to know that you can run a report on anything. So I'm going to run an incident report. And if I want to include only incident reports that have media, I just check this box, and then I can select a date range. Maybe I want to look at all incident reports since August 3rd. I can export to Excel, or I can search immediately and see it in my browser. So that's what I've done. I've selected the browser view. And again, keep in mind, incident reports um, and images include uh, the signature as an image. But for the incident we recorded today, there is also an image here. So not only the signatures, but the image of the injury. If I wanted to print this, I would simply do a control P, and now I would follow the print instructions for my device. It'll produce a PDF, and then if you wanted to, you could email that to a parent separately, or you could simply print it off for your records. I'm gonna cancel that for now. So that is reports. And again, you can run a report on almost anything in your account. Finally, there is the KID Planner. The KID Planner is for pre-planning events days, weeks, or even months in advance. You'll begin by selecting the room that you want to plan for. And you do need to select one room to begin planning. So I'm going to select my kindergarten room. Notice it defaults to today's date. Make sure you're on plan, and then carefully click the blue plus button. Now I can select whatever activity I wish to plan for. Again, I want you to note these are the activities that appear on the activities page. So if you want to pre-plan an activity or an event, you'll need to first add it to the activities page so that it appears here for you to plan. So for example, maybe I want to plan a meal. So now I can select all of the details that go with this meal. And maybe this is a midday meal, so we're having vegetables, we're having some kind of meat, and we are going to have uh, peas and carrots with that. I can add a drink to this, and I can indicate the number of ounces I'm going to offer the children with that meal. I can add any additional items. I can add an additional drink, an additional food, anything. As long as you have a box there, you can enter something new. Notice at the bottom right, it says select rooms. This is the only opportunity you'll have to add additional rooms. If I wanted to plan this for the entire center, I could select every room. I'm not going to do that for now, uh, so I'll cancel out of that. But you can make additional notes here. And then simply click Save Plan. It'll ask you to confirm by clicking OK. And now my meal plan is saved for today. Once the plan is saved, you've got four additional buttons. The first button is information. It simply shows you what is in this plan. The pencil icon allows you to edit, but I want you to note, you cannot select a new room after this. Um, if you do need to add a room, you actually have to uh, start over and create a new plan. Uh, you can delete the plan if it was by mistake, or if you didn't add the rooms you needed, you can just click delete. But the second button, the sort of light blue button, if you click on that, it allows you to copy this identical event into the future. So I could copy it for tomorrow, or I could select a date range. So I could select a beginning date, 
maybe next week, and an ending date. So I would copy this for all of next week. And when I click OK, that plan is now copied for the entire week next week. When you're done planning, you can click the X to close. However, at this point, only you and your teachers can see the planned meal. So if you want to let your parents know what the kiddos are going to be eating next week, you can go to print and follow the print instructions here. Select the week that you're looking for. So I'm going to select next week. And it is a meal plan we're looking at. And I'm going to click OK. And that brings up my menu for next week. Now I would continue following the prompts to print. It would produce a PDF. And again, I could go to sent or send message, and I could attach this as a PDF for all parents. For now, I'm going to cancel out of this. And we're gonna get out of the Kid Planner. So that really is Kid Planner. And again, you can plan events days, weeks, or even months in advance. In the black bar at the top, View Edit gives you quick access to the most common pages in Kid Reports. Utilities has two key features, among others. You can change teacher passwords. This allows you to update the teacher password for all teachers at once. Again, you can select all teachers, a room, specific teacher, type in your password, click send, and that will update it. Also under Utilities, you can run a manual synchronization of your account. Go to Import and ProCare Cloud Sync. So the synchronization normally occurs overnight. So if we look at previous synchronizations for my account, you'll see it's running at about, oh, between 10 and 11 p.m. at night. If I want to manually synchronize right now, I can click the Sync PC Cloud button now, It'll ask you to wait for a moment, and then all you have to do is refresh until you see the green check mark next to the current synchronization. This one is running, but as long as there's a green check mark, it indicates that, there's, uh, that the sync has completed. So let's refresh until it completes. The synchronization has completed, and now I get a message that says ProCare Full Cloud, uh, Full Sync only allowed every four hours and then it'll tell you the next time that you can synchronize your account. If I scroll to the bottom, you'll see that my synchronization did complete. You can also open a brief report that shows what synchronized. It begins with teachers, then children, and it shows parents, and then finally parent emails. So that is the show details report. Finally, at the upper right, you see where it says regular view. If you click on that, you can also switch to archive view. It'll turn orange. And if I go to family members, I will see only those family members who have been deactivated in the account or they've been archived. You can switch back to regular view and you'll see all of your current family members. So that is everything about the Kid Reports admin portal.